slight little bump to the right, very marginal. Then they start to recenter themselves to the top. And here's the exciting bit. There's a big shift forward now into this last parallel position. He's 4.6 inches further forward than where they started. Hey golfers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna look at Tiger Woods golf swing and in particular, what his wrists do in the golf swing and what his pelvis and chest do in the golf swing. So we're using Sportsbox 3D, pretty cool piece of kit to be able to dive in. And we're gonna look at this swing on the left of Tiger. Now, technically, I would go as far to say as Tiger is one of the most technically sound golf swings that you could see. Now, the jury is out at the moment. I know he's got his injuries and things, although his golf swing still is looking pretty tidy, and I would certainly take it as well. So and I'm sure a lot of you watching this would as well. Um, so we're going to have a little look here. Now, with this app, we can have a look at an endless amount of information. We can see kinematic sequence, so many things. Now, we're not going to make it too technical. We're going to hone in on the metrics that I had said with regards to the chest and the wrists as well, this lead wrist angle down here. We'll be able to look at that at different parts in the swing. You can see it's lit up green. That's obviously a good thing, okay? Um, as we take this through here, what we can also do with this is pull up so many different things. I mean, you don't want it all on. I'll show you what it's about. We've got shaft plane, shoulder plane, vertical plane, so many things. Um, but as I say, just to kind of show you what that's about. But we're going to dive in here. Let's have a little look at the hips, the shoulders, and the wrist angles, okay? So really interestingly, as he starts, and I'll kind of walk you through this as we do it, let's bring him on to right on the face on and obviously as you can see as i move this the 3d robot is moving along with him okay so we pull up the let's talk about the wrists first this is a really interesting one okay is this where a lot of people get i guess things not going to say wrong okay um but in terms of like wrist hinge a lot of golfers try and achieve maximum wrist hinge in their backswing you know sometimes by the time they reach takeaway the club is already fully hinged to 90 degrees okay um now when we look here if you notice what this is actually looking at is the angle between tiger's lead forearm here okay you see it on the left and then also the shaft okay so that angle in there is what we're talking about here in there okay so when you see here coming into the takeaway not a whole lot of wrist hinge there will be some but not a whole lot interestingly as he gets to the top of his backswing we're going to see 91 degrees now this little green range is kind of where you want to be uh, based on tour averages say okay and what i'll find a lot as i've been using this app more and more is more golfers getting down into this 120 130 amount of say lead wrist angle okay and um, so think of that as over hinge now the problems that come from that is it gets the backswing very long the more hinge on that wrist the more the face is likely to open as a result of that even the right elbow can fly left arm can actually break just by the swing getting that much longer okay and you can notice a really nice short of parallel position here with tiger over on the left side and that 90 degrees so it is pretty much if you can see me now i'm doing quote textbook all right now interestingly into the downswing the time he reaches last parallel which any of you watching my videos know that i am a big fan of the last parallel position in the golf swing and he's not holding wrist angles like crazy now the difference is a lot of golfers from the top down to this position are going to throw the club away or cast it you could call it and um, so holding on to some angles in that downswing for a lot of people the, the general golfing population is advisable and um, but you can see here that he's had 90 at the top and then he's lost some into the downswing 
and he gets into this lovely position which again if you've watched my videos you'll know i love it where the angle with the right forearm and the shaft are nearly perpendicular right angle and then when he, you also look at his hands here you see that they're just in front of the outside of his right thigh that also is something that i'm a big fan of and i preach religiously in, in my videos so it's kind of cool to see that and then down into impact and follow through you can see everything remaining in the green so obviously really good so the moral of that story basically when it comes to the backswing is that what we're seeing is a lot of the best ball strikers in the world are not actually over hinging those wrists you know and a lot of golfers on the driving range or come for lessons are really excessively hinging those at the top i see that a lot using hack motion as well so um basically the moral of the story is is you know don't use the wrist so much in the backswing it's okay to save some of that hinge in the downswing even though we know tiger throws some of it away i can guarantee the majority of golfers watching this we're not holding that angle too much it's definitely getting thrown away in the dying swing okay so let's kind of go into this one which was pelvis sway now so basically if you read there the description so let's say compared to address the numbers are negative when the pelvis is sliding away from the target so laterally sliding and positive when it's moving towards okay and tiger pretty much again hits all the greens bar the finish but not so worried about that Basically, address position zero. Take away, you can see there, minus 0 0.6. So what we see as well is that the best in the world do have a little bit of a sway in the takeaway with their hips, okay? Now, this is usually because they'll have a little trigger where the pressure, as before they take the club away, will bump slightly towards the target, and then it kind of bounces back. But really, you can see there, it's about an inch. So it's really, what's that, you know, half a golf ball? Of movement so it's really not that much but i know a lot of golfers will, will move that two three inches as i've measured on here and um, with some of my guys it's, it's definitely two three inches of sway to this point okay now as he goes to the top now you'll see that he's actually 0 0.2 further away from where he started so pretty much exactly the same all right so these hips are pretty much there's a little bit to the takeaway slight little bump to the right very marginal then they start to recenter themselves to the top. And here's the exciting bit. There's a big shift forward now into this last parallel position. He's 4.6 inches further forward than where they started. And at impact, that's six. And that's generally what you're gonna see from the best in the world, okay? Um, really interesting insight with that to see what those hips are doing um, in that initial part of the swing. And then as it right around when it approaches near the top if i kind of pull it back here on the the 2d on the left you'll kind of notice a little bit of a see this kind of movement as he approaches the top he starts to move towards the target and i believe the amg guys kind of coined that recentering and it's a really nice uh nice phrase to do and it's very subtle you know it's not crazy so we're over there we go and he's sitting pretty now coming into the downswing um, okay, and the other one I wanted to highlight was chest sway. Okay, again, really, really insightful. Oh, he's got an amber. I maybe needs a lesson with me. He's getting, he's point, probably point two of an inch out on that. I must uh, get in contact with him and get that sorted. <laughs> now it's really, really good. Address. Okay, zero now with the the chest. All right. Again, a little bit of a movement off. So as those hips kind of moved off, so did the chest. But it is so marginal. And I guess for the majority of golfers out there, that's going to be a lot more, okay? So I'm not saying that any of you watching this need to feel that you're kind of moving the hips and the chest away from the ball as you start the swing, because the likelihood is you're already doing that. But it's just interesting to see that the likes of Tiger and a lot of the guys on tour are all going to have this little bit of a bump, and it's very, very marginal top again one inch behind where they started and you can see in the green range where they're looking for around zero so really there's not a lot of that you know getting to the top of the backswing loading up on the right side with the the upper body sitting way back or the head back here on this side if you look on the left we'll see the tiger doesn't actually shift way over to his right okay and that's where a lot of golfers do and they really struggle to recover from there 
Um, chest sway then coming into the down swing. Again, getting back down into this position, slightly further forward than where they started, and impact again slightly further forward than where they started. So it's really, really interesting to see that. Um, what I would like to get is a driver swing as well and kind of look at some of the uh, differences in irons and driver. I think that would be interesting. We might see some different um, things happening. Okay. Uh, so really interesting. A couple other little things. Uh, chest turn I thought was quite interesting to the top, obviously achieving that 90 degree. Again, quote textbook, um, really good. And chest actually at impact reading open there a little bit too much but actually that's when you look at his shoulders from down the line on this side very let's go straight on to down the line view and uh, there and you can see the shoulders just very marginally so a lot of golfers again will have those shoulders way more open than this and um, look at the top it's also a pretty cool view that way so you can see the hips listen there's so many things i just thought i'd bring it to your attention um, recently got this and been putting loads of swings in and just seeing it it's it's very fascinating stuff some of you might not like this some of you will literally love it if you're anything like me um, but really cool so I guess the moral of the story is there is it is okay to have that little bit of a bump across in the back swing to when you get up to the top that you don't have a whole lot of it and we're not trying to really load behind this golf ball like loading over a right foot we just can't get back in the down swing to get the hips those hips and body kind of in front of where they started uh, makes it very very difficult and then also that lead wrist angle into the back swing i think is is critical i see a lot of golfers trying to hinge the wrist far too much in the back swing and it actually just causes so many complications in the down swing okay guys hope you enjoyed this one today please as always don't forget to hit the like button hit the subscribe button um let me know what you thought in the comments. Did you like this type of thing? Would you like to see some more tour swing analysis alongside my instructional stuff? Um, I'd be really keen to hear people's thoughts on that. If you stuck to the end of this video, that is, because you'll not hear that if you didn't stick to the end of it. All right, guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one.